Hello and welcome to the Crawford Art Gallery in Cork. I'm Matthew White, I'm an art historian based in University College Cork and today I'll be guiding you through our exhibition entitled Rembrandt in Print. Rembrandt is a Dutch master painter of the 17th century and in this exhibition we encounter 50 of Rembrandt's etchings in extraordinary detail. Let's step into the gallery and into our modern exhibition space to see the works in more detail. So welcome to the exhibition space itself. And now that we're in here, we can start to think about what this exhibition contains and what it, what it seeks to show the viewer. As you know, as you can see behind me here, the exhibition is titled Rembrandt in Print. So we're focusing on the artist Rembrandt Van Rijn. However, we're looking at a very particular aspect of his career. And you'll notice this often in, in exhibitions such as this, or in galleries across the world. There'll always be a specific theme and a specific subject that's explored. And once you know that, and once you appreciate that, you can begin to think about how the exhibition space and how the way the pieces are hung transfers that meaning and that message to the viewer. So Rembrandt, as were most Dutch masters of his period, the 17th century, we call it the Baroque period in Europe, um, most Dutch masters were very prolific painters just as Rembrandt was. He's mainly known for his painting. However, what this exhibition shows you is that he was also a very prolific printmaker. And we'll say a little bit more about the process of printmaking and what these objects actually are in just a few minutes. But as we're here at the entrance, we can talk a little bit about what the exhibition contains and how it's arranged. What you have here are 50 prints from Rembrandt's career, from a period of time spanning roughly from the 1630s up to the 1650s. These 50 prints are on loan from the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford, and they detail the artist's piercing observation of everyday life, of narrative subjects, and of individuals, including even himself. And so this exhibition, looking at Rembrandt's print, explores various different genres, as we would say, different themes that the artist explores throughout his, his body of work. And this exhibition arranges the print according to these various different themes. So you can encounter them as you move through the space. You have Rembrandt's printed portraits, his self-portraits, his religious subjects, his landscapes, and his nude figures. And so you have these various different themes and they're grouped on the walls according to these themes. Now, as we're standing here in the space, you might want to take in the way that it's arranged and the way that it looks. You might see that there are various different pathways you can take through the space itself. And you might consider, do the curators, the people who put the exhibition together, guide you on a particular path? Or are you invited to take the path that you want to? And are you invited to encounter these works in the order in which you yourself prefer? And I like to think that this space is somewhat left open to interpretation. As I mentioned, there are several different paths. You're introduced to the exhibition just as you come in the doors. We're just standing inside the doorway here. And you can see that you have some information on the wall about the exhibition, about Rembrandt. And then you encounter, as I said, these various different themes grouped according to artistic genre. And as we move through the space, and as you visit really any exhibition, take into account the labels on the walls, the information that the exhibition provides you about the works. Does it help you in understanding them? Does it change your experience of them? Does it invite you to experience them in a particular way? These are all questions that we'll tease out as we move through the exhibition. So here we are standing amongst Rembrandt's self-portraits, and it might be important to think that this is one of the first aspects of the exhibition that you encounter as you enter the space. And you might wonder, does that help you understand the exhibition any better? Is it deliberate, maybe, that one of the first parts of the exhibition that you see are representations of the artist himself? Does it help you to see the artist as he viewed himself before you see his works? Does it explain the works any better? These are questions that you might ask yourself as you move through. However, we're focusing on one particular self-portrait, and it's this one here on my left. It's 
Rembrandt's self-portrait with his wife, Saskia, and it's the earliest of his engraved self-portraits um, where he depicts him and his wife. It's a particularly useful piece in order to see the, the level of detail that Rembrandt is able to work up through the etching process. But before we look in detail at the piece itself, let's consider how it's displayed to the viewer. You can see that it's contrasted very nicely with the color, a really deep, rich color on the wall. And this helps to bring out the rather pale color of the page and the frame that it's contained within. So all of these things contribute to how you view the work and how you can understand it and even isolate it. You'll notice as well that, as with other works in this exhibition, it's accompanied by a label that gives you information about the artist, about the name of the work, when it was made, what medium it's made, and then some information about how it's made, what it depicts. All these things that contribute to your understanding of the image. And so bear that in mind, how the writing, as it said, on the wall, contributes to your understanding of the image and how it invites you to engage on a more knowledgeable, maybe even on a more personal level with the piece. And these are all done very carefully um, in exhibitions such as this. It's also displayed at eye level. And this is particularly important for Rembrandt's etchings because they're very, very small. As you can see here next to me, this self-portrait is minuscule. And th the fact that they're displayed at a level that is inviting um, and that facilitates the viewer's own height, it allows you to come really close, to look at the individual details, um, and to explore all of the various different strokes that Rembrandt includes, the way that he builds up the character of the subject. In this case, the subject is, of course, himself and his wife. So if we come a little closer and we view the very details of this image, we can tease out some of the techniques that Rembrandt uses. You can see that the lines are very carefully, individually rendered, and the etching process itself aids this level of detail. The lines are so fine that he can extract single hairs if he wants to, or he can group them together, bunch the lines together to create areas of shadow, to contrast with areas of light, where there are less lines etched into the plate. In this case, Rembrandt is using that level of detail and he's exploiting it to his advantage. Because here, of course, he's showing us something that is very familiar to him, and that's his own image. Something that he has, obviously, a lot of knowledge about, as we all do, about our own image. And you can think about that level of intimacy that the artists would have with their own image. And then you can understand how the level of detail helps the artist to explore that. You can see that he positions himself up to the foreground of the image, so that he's closer to the viewer. And he positions his wife slightly further back in the background. And actually in this way, this is quite an unusual self-portrait of the artist and his wife. Very often you'd see them close together, sharing maybe an intimate moment, um, touching, embracing maybe. But in this case, Rembrandt is shown as the artist who's sitting at a table, who may, might even be drawing, and he relegates his wife to the background. Now, you might also take advantage of the opportunity and the level of detail that Rembrandt includes to think about how he differentiates between the foreground and the background. On a flat piece of pale coloured paper, this might be difficult to do. However, you can see that Rembrandt opens up those lines ever so slightly when he's drawing Saskia. And they become more densely interlocked as he moves to the foreground. And so what he's essentially doing is he's allowing the colour to sort of fade away as he moves into the background, as he moves towards Saskia, in order to show that she is further away from the picture plane. And he allows the differentiation between light and shade 
to become more dramatic as he moves to the foreground in order to maybe enhance the idea that he's really projecting forward, almost even, you could say, out of the picture plane. So we're now standing amongst Rembrandt's religious scenes. And we're going to focus on this particular work on my left-hand side here. It's called The Descent from the Cross. And it's one of Rembrandt's most dramatic religious scenes. It's one in which he really explores the dramatic difference between light and shade, which is a quintessential character of his work. Now, before we actually look at the individual aspects of the scene itself, I want to draw your attention to how this appears on the wall, how, it, how the, the image is hung, and how this aids your interpretation of it and your experience of it. You'll notice, first of all, that we have labels that accompany all of these individual works, so that you can gain some insight into the narrative that's taking place, and you can gain some insight into Rembrandt's creative process um, in each of the individual works. So think about how that aids your interpretation, how that contributes to your experience of the exhibition. Does it help to be able to gain individual insight into each of the works? Does it allow you to understand them better? And does it allow you to enter into the narrative and interpret what you're seeing that little bit easier? So this work, as I mentioned, is an extremely dramatic religious work. It depicts the moment when Christ is taken down from the cross. And this is a particular type of um, style that's evoked quite often in the period. Very dramatic moments within religious narratives because it was thought that these particular moments would solicit the most emotional response from the viewer, which in the context of church life, in the context of Christian belief, this is what was wanted, this is what was desired for the viewer to engage on an emotional level with what they're seeing. And so we can think about how Rembrandt puts this scene together in order to evoke that response from the viewer. You'll notice, first of all, that one of Rembrandt's most important traits, and this is true for his painting, just as it is for his prints, is present here. The dramatic contrast between light and shade in order to build up the emotion of the scene. And as I said, this is a particularly emotionally tense narrative. So you see that the main action in the scene is taking place actually quite near the top of the image. And it's flooded with light. And it stands out because the background is shrouded in darkness. And Rembrandt knows that this visual dynamic will attract the attention of the viewer. So he's very clever in how he uses light and shade in this way. It's set up almost as a stage set with the characters of the narrative. Christ's body and the people carrying it down from the cross. They're standing upon this rocky parapet. And there's a very strong downward motion in the piece where Rembrandt uses very long flowing lines when he's drawing out, when he's engraving and etching out that piece of linen cloth. And those lines descend and they're then matched by the weight and the gravity of Christ's body. And you can really see that he's weighing down into the knees of those people who are carrying him. Again, Rembrandt is using all the tools at his disposal to draw your eye down and to make the force of that image exert downwards according to gravity. It's very realistic in this way too. And what Rembrandt is trying to do is he's inviting you to follow the narrative in the direction in which it unfolds. Starting at the top, at the cross, it moves downwards to where Christ's body is situated, roughly around the centre of the image, but then it continues downwards to that funeral shroud that's laid on the ground below. And so we get the sense that all the weight of that narrative, all the movement is moving downwards, and that our eye is being invited through Rembrandt's technique follow the narrative in that direction. And this is a very good example of just the level of detail and careful attention to narrative and character that Rembrandt places into his engravings. And the actual medium of the engraving itself lends itself to this level of detail. But you can really get a sense of Rembrandt's efforts 
in that regard, when you can see just the depth of the darkness in the background, the way the lines converge so closely together to appear almost black, and the way that he then opens them up as he comes into the foreground in order to shed light on those images at the front. So we move now to the back of the exhibition space, and here we're standing in the print studio, which helps you to understand Rembrandt's own creative process and practical process when he was making the print works that you can see in the main exhibition. This print studio was put together in collaboration with Cork Printmakers, which supports contemporary artists in the art of printmaking. So it's very interesting to be able to experience Rembrandt's works, which can often seem, you know, maybe quite remote, because they are very old. But then to be able to come into this print studio and to see that this process is something that still exists, that's still being developed, and that's still in contemporary artists' practice, even locally here in Cork. And so this whole area is designed to give insight into how these objects are made and to help you to understand how this is a creative process and this is a practical process that has existed and continues to exist into the present day. So now we're standing in front of a contemporary piece of print work and this is by Deirdre McKenna who works out of Cork Printmakers. And this is teamed up here with some objects that give insight into the actual process of making a print like this. Now, as you'll be able to see, hopefully, this is quite similar in style and in approach to Rembrandt's work, and so you can get an insight into the, the continuation throughout this long period of this actual process and what goes into it. It's interesting to be able to examine how these prints are made because we're familiar with things like sculpture, we're familiar with the process of painting, and very often it's something that we do ourselves. However, etching and printmaking um, can be something that's a little bit remote, and maybe not everybody understands exactly how it's done. And this is what this area of the exhibition tries to show you. So, a print such as this would be made using, starting off with a metal plate, usually a copper plate, this will be treated and covered with a layer of acid-resistant wax. And so it's actually into that wax that the etching process is carried out with a series of sharp instruments with very fine points in order to get that level of detail. The picture is incised into that wax. And so you get the individual lines um, carved into the outside of that metal plate. That metal plate is then submerged in acid, and remember that that wax is acid resistant, and so the acid bites into the exposed copper that you've etched out, that you've drawn into the wax using your sharp instrument. When the wax is then removed, you're left with those lines that have been incised using the acid. That plate is then covered with a wash of ink, it's placed into a printing press with a sheet of paper and pressure is exerted on it in order to print the image onto the piece of paper. And you, the result you get is the result of all of those individual lines that the, you've etched into the wax and into the copper plate. And here is the result. And I think it's particularly interesting to be able to see a contemporary piece of work, in this case, as I said, by Deirdre McKenna, alongside those of Rembrandt. And you're able to see the continuity in that process between something that was taking place in the 17th century and something that's still unfolding today in contemporary artistic practice. As I said, this is shown alongside the instruments and the tools and the plates that are involved in this process so that you can see almost step by step exactly what it is the artist does in order to produce a piece of work like this.